ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ชายวังตรอตมาเอเดงสรัสปาติยาสังตโตชายังโมทีระเอนัสตาเปรชุอปาเตรชุนิตยาบาคะวะตะเสวยาบาคะวะตุธรรมะชโลเคปาคติภา
give it up. <coughs> Translation, purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki Chai. In the same way that the sun and moon are eclipsed by a low planet, the Brahmana lost all his good sense. Taking advantage of this situation, he always thought of the prostitute. And within a short time, he took her as a servant in his house and abandoned all the regulative principles of a Brahmana. Purport. By speaking this verse, Shukadev Goswami wants to impress upon the mind of the reader that Achamil's exalted position as a Brahmana vanquished, was vanquished by his association with the prostitute so much so that he forgot all his Brahminical activities. Nevertheless, at the end of his life, by chanting the four syllables of the name Narayana, he was saved from the gravest danger of falling down. Svalpam apasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Even a little devotional service can save one from the greatest danger. Devotional service, which begins with chanting of the holy name of the Lord, is so powerful that even if one falls down from the exalted position of a Brahmana through sexual indulgence, he can be saved from all calamities. If he somehow or other chants the holy name of the Lord, this is the extraordinary power of the Lord's holy name. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, it is advised that one not forget the chanting of the Holy Name even for a moment. Satatam kirtayantamam yadantascha tridhavrata. There are so many dangers in this material world that one may fall down from an exalted position at any time. Yet if one keeps himself always pure and steady by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he will be safe without a doubt. Tan nimitta smara vyacha graha grasto vichetanaha tameva manasa dhyayan svadharmat viraramaha In the same way that the sun and moon are eclipsed by low planet, the Brahmana lost all his good sense. Taking advantage of this situation, he always thought of the prostitute, and within a short time, he took her as a servant in his house and abounded all the regulative principles of a Brahmana. So we're going in the beginning of the, this chapter, why actually this Achamil story was narrated by Shukadev Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit. Because Mara, Maharaj Parikshit had a doubt. Uh, that his doubt was uh, because uh, his doubt started after hearing the description of hellish planets in the end of the fifth canto. Uh, quite a lot of he uh, hellish planets are described and also the different punishments uh, given there according to one's uh, sin. So Maharaj Parikshit, he became very doubtful, very concerned. Uh, his doubt was uh, but, uh, if, uh, if there is a hellish condition, if uh, with the punishment will uh, correct somebody's uh, habit by going to hell, uh, it is actually seen that it never works out. 
like a criminal. A criminal is uh, punished, but then again, he uh, because he didn't uh, get any better engagement due to his habits, he still continues with his uh, criminal work. And he goes back to prison again. So this, uh, this kind of atonement or punishment after um, a crime or after some sinful deed is actually useless. Uh, it's called prayashita. So prayashita is useless in the sense because it doesn't uh, purify the soul. Uh, from, from the, uh, doesn't become purified from, from the ati sin, original sin. The sin is very pollute, uh, the soul is very covered due to co coming in contact with material nature. <coughs> Turning the back against the Lord, against the sun, he comes in contact with darkness. Therefore, that is the original sin. The sin is that we turn our back towards the Lord and want to start or engage in our own way of life, to become happy and successful in life without being in yoga or in harmony, working or serving the Lord for Lord's senses, for His pleasure. So the conditioned soul, therefore, is condi conditioned by the material nature since time immemorial and do, uh, do, uh, because of the contact with this nature, he develops certain habits. If one acts in goodness, one develops certain habits, uh, virtuous, one becomes peaceful, happy, charitable, pious, uh, truthful, uh, religious, like that. Somebody who acts on the passion, he acts according to the Raja's principle. He becomes very lusty, very greedy. He thinks, I'm the enjoyer, I'm the doer. Uh, so on the, everything depends on my work. And those in Tamaguna, accordingly, live in ignorance. Uh, always angry and envious. and uh, engage in low-class activities. So this uh, Sukadev Goswami narrates the story of Archimil to prove to the king and to the reader of the Bhagavatam to give him evidence that uh, actually there is a higher, something better than atonement and that is the chant of the holy chanting of the holy name. Because atonement is only a, a temporary relief, but then again, due to habit, one engages again according to one's mentality and nature. So he tells, he gives the story here of uh, Archimil, who was actually born in an arist aristocratic Brahmana family. So as such, he was in Gurukula. Uh, he served his father, who was a very good Brahmana, very strict in the Vedic principles. Brahmana in this term means in the mode of goodness, is not transcendental. They're pious, they live in mode of goodness, they chant mantras, they're doing their sandhya, prata, morning, noon, evening, rituals, bathing, chanting mantras, offering oblations in yagya to the demigods, to the forefathers, etc., like that. Ah. So that's a mode of goodness, it's not transcendental. So it's dharma. So uh, this uh, brahmana, Achamil, the son of the brahmana, he was a brahmachari, brahma achara, 
Uh, that means he followed the, the path of uh, spiritual acti activities that includes celibacy, truthfulness, uh, reg regulated life, studying Vedas like that. So, um, Archimil, he was very regulated, following, serving his father. One time he went to the forest, like Brahmachari sent, goes to the forest every morning collecting firewood for the Yagya and uh, some, some other ingredients that is needed for Yagya, getting some water like that. So, um, on the way he saw one low-class man, Shudra, it is described, I mean, he is uh, from the lower, lower caste, uh, engaging in some sensual affair, some relationship with a low-class woman, with, with a, a Dasi, with a servant. So the man was very lusty. This woman also became very, was also very, obviously very lusty. So they were engaged with each other. And this brahmachari, he had, uh, although he was on duty, he was on duty, I mean, he was, uh, he had to do the yagya, service for the, to perform the yagya. So he, he uh, gave a, a sidelong glance to this uh, happening of this uh, couple who were engaging in uh, sensual activity. And somehow other, although he was uh, engaged in Brahminical activity, he started to, uh, the picture of that contemplation of this uh, uh, sense gratifying couple stayed in his mind. Uh, that shows actually the fall down or the, sen the sens sensual gr cross activities start here in the mind uh, by subtle con contemplation. That's also described or stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Jayata Vishayam Pumsham. Sangha stage, Jayata Vishayam Pumsam. Sangha stage, Sangha Sanchayate Kama, Kama Kroda Vichayate. And then, Kroda Bhavati Samoha, Samoha Smriti Vibrama. Smriti Brahmsa Buddhi Nasho, Buddhi Nashat Pranashati. So, like Prabhupada is pointing out in the purport, in, in just two verses, uh, Krishna, who is most intelligent, uh, can uh, summarize the whole fall down uh, of the conditioned soul with the mati in the material sense gratification, falling in ignorance. Uh, so it starts with jnana, jnayate ovishayam pungsham, uh, by beginning with the contemplation of sense objects. Uh, lust arises. Uh, and when lust, uh, and if lust is cultivated, it is always burning like a fire, it can never become extinguished by pouring oil or ghee on it. It becomes, it's increasing. And ultimately the the conditioned soul becomes frustrated, gets angry sometimes because it all doesn't always working out the sense gratification as he would like or as she would like. So, Kroda manifests, Kroda Bhavati Samoha, then when Kroda manifests and it becomes uh, Moha, illusion. And from me, and if moha comes, uh, memory goes lost. Smriti, Brahmja, Buddhi, Nasha. Huh? Uh, smriti, Smriti, the memory. It doesn't anymore, anymore remember the instruction of the spiritual master. 
the instruction of the Vedas, suddenly he's blank. Or like stated here, he's covered like by an evil planet, the consciousness uh, who is like the moon, the mind is like the moon, becomes co covered by an evil planet, it's described here, eclipsed. So, so the mind becomes completely blank, he cannot remember any, anything, and he has only this uh, picture in the mind or this feeling in the mind, this emotion, I, I, I have to enjoy. Uh. And then from this kind of an enjoyment uh, or me uh, loss of uh, memory or remembrance, mriti, uh, then buddhi, intelligence, Intelligence means uh, to analyze what is right and what is wrong. This distinction is very sharp. This is much needed in yoga, in any yoga practice, also bhakti yoga, this buddhi, uh, buddhi yoga. So if this uh, intelligence is not sharp, it's not uh, focused, we have a sattmika buddhir ekeha kuru nandana. And if the intelligence becomes bahu, becomes uh, many branched, uh, bahu shaka in antascha vyavasaya, uh, then, then uh, one has no, no the power, has no, cannot be determined on the path of uh, attaining uh, Krishna's lotus feet. Uh, it's not possible. So one needs have to have a sharp intelligence, but if the sharp if the intelligence becomes bewildered due to illusion and forgetfulness of one's uh, real duty and identity as a servant of Krishna. Jivera Swarupoy, Krishna das. If this uh, identity goes lost. Intelligence is finished. Buddhi nasha pranashati. Uh, and Buddhi is click, linked off. It's clicked off. Uh, it's not working anymore properly. Then one uh, acts like a fool. As uh, Lord Kapila Dev describes in his uh, teachings of Kapila Dev to Devahuti. Uh, a man who comes uh, from his past life, uh, after, af after he goes to hell, becomes punished, he comes back after lo many, many lifetimes back to the human species of life. And then again he has a human, he's a human being, he has a man, or he has a, gets a, a man, a woman body. Then the, man, then the soul in the man body, he thinks I'm the enjoyer. The, so, the soul in the woman body, she thinks I'm the enjoyer. Although both of them are not real enjoyers, they're, they're uh, servants. Uh, so then, they be, then they, because they want to enjoy, then they become sufferers. And then the man, uh, the soul, soul who is punished in, in hellish life, hellish circumstances, gets a man body. He completely forgets this punishment in hell and from previous life activities that he was animal and I don't know in which species and this situation he, he was uh, situated. He completely forgets and again acts like a fool. Murka. He again becomes uh, covered by a complete illusion and he behaves like a fool, like an idiot, running after the like a uh, running after woman. And the woman is running after man. Uh, and again he becomes entangled. And there Kapila Dev in his teachings, he explains quite uh, long, many, many verses, how entangling it is, this, uh, this contact with Prakriti, with the material nature, especially in the form of a woman. 
he emphasized this very much, you know, these three Sangha, how entangling. There is not, nothing much, nothing more pollution or degrading than the attachment to woman and the woman to man. And even worse, Kapila Devi says, is if one associates with a man who is lusty after woman. So in, in our days of uh, life, everyone is in this situation, man and woman. The woman is crazy after enjoyment and the man is crazy, even more crazy, because he becomes completely under control of the woman. Becomes like a play toy, like a marionette. Uh, he dancing and copy the tape says, just see how powerful the Maya is in the form of woman, just by her blinking of the eyebrows, uh, or lifting eyebrows and twinkling with the eyebrows, you know, she can conquer the greatest heroes and finish them off. Uh, heroes are very proud, I'm hero, I'm very powerful, I conquered so much. I'm very successful. I conquered so much land. Uh, this is mine. This is all my control. I, and I can enjoy so much. And have so many servants. Have so much money. Uh, but if he comes in contact with woman, and this woman is uh, blinking a little, uh, with uh, contact, like a con then he's, he becomes like immediately pierced by Smara. Smara is Cupid, Amore, Kantarpa, Kamadev. He's immediately pierced. Kamadev has five arrows on his bow, in his quiver. And he has a bow, and with these, arrow, with these five arrows, he attacks all the five senses the eyes, the ears, the tongue. The, the skin, uh, like that, all, beco all become uh, at attacked by these arrows of uh, Kamadev. And all the places state that does Kamadev's arrow, one arrow makes you crazy, another one makes you forgetful, another <coughs> one, another one paralyzes you. Another one making you gossiping, uh, not, not gossiping, uh, I was, hi, hiccups, <laughs> that you get hic hiccups. So you can get all kinds of ecstatic symptoms, uh, but in material ecstasy. This material ecstasy is called madhu. Uh, it's like an intoxicant. Uh, sense gratifiers, they have to intoxicate themselves that they can enjoy a lot drinking alcohol and wine, and then associated with woman, and woman with man, so that they think, so now it's very nice, like now we can have jolly, nice time. So they need alcohol for that. Now I remember one story, just came in mind, uh, Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, they were on the way to Advaita Charya's house. They wanted to go down to the, uh, to the, gang, to the Ganga. So on the way, they, they, made a, they saw, saw a house, in a house, there was one sannyasi. And the sannyasi, he was actually an alcoholic. And he kept women. He had a woman there, and he was drinking intoxicants and I don't know what. Uh, so he immediately called Lord Chaitanya, Oh, Nimai, come here. Be a guest in my house. Come immediately. I will serve you, Madhu. Uh, and Lord Chaitanya heard Madhu, then he thought, Oh, sweetness. Madhuram, Madhuram, Vapurasya Vibho. Uh, Maduram, Maduram, Vadanam, Maduram. Madugandim ridos mitam eta dahor. Maduram, 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 Maduram. So he, 
He, he immediately remembered, oh, Madhu, yeah, I like Madhu. And he entered the house, but actually this man, what he wanted to give him, he wanted to serve him alcohol. Madhu, it's also alcohol. So this, uh, but Nityananda Prabhu, who was a little more senior, and the world exper more experienced of world life, he was, uh, he, well, he went already 20, 20 years on traveling in India, so many pilgrimage places, so he had made a lot of experience. And he told, Nimai, don't go. This man, uh, he wants to give you madhu. Madhu, not uh, madhu in Krishna consciousness, love to Krishna. He wants to give you wine, alcohol. When Lord Chaitanya heard wine, Alcohol he immediately turned out of this house and to purify himself from the association of an alcoholic and from a pseudo sannyasi who was in kept a woman <coughs> privately. He wanted to immediately jump to the Ganga to purify himself. But the sannyasi was calling, wait, 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 why you don't uh, accept my hospitality? You are my guest. Come in. Our Lord Chaitanya completely ignored. Oh, then uh, this uh, Brahman, this, Bra uh, this Sanyasi became angry. And he said, oh, this is typical Kali Yuga behavior of the Grihastas. Uh, they cannot respect anymore the Sanyasis, the renounced order of life. Uh, and uh, he let him go. So, but he was very upset. But, but anyway, for Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda, no problem. Uh, so they jumped in the Ganga to purify themselves from that bad association. And they went straight to Advaita Chari's house. That's another story. Uh, I only wanted to mention this. How Lord Chaitanya uh, actually almost uh, was tricked by one pseudo sannyasi by hearing the name Madhu, uh, but Nityananda saved him. Anyway, that's Lila. And they purified themselves because if one has bad association with materialists who are attached to women and drinking wine, the only purification is to take a bath in the Ganga and to chant the holy name. One immediately has to take a bath and chant the holy name. That's also described by Lord uh, in Lord Chaitanya's appearance. When Lord Chaitanya appear, appeared, it was arranged that there was an uh, eclipse of the moon. Uh, and in that time, all the Hindus were taking bath to counteract the negative uh, influence of the eclipse. So they take a bath in the Ganga, chanting the holy name, Hari Hari. Huh? So that Lord Chaitanya, in this way Lord Chaitanya already, by his appearance, he arranged the Yuga Dharma that everyone chants the holy name. Because if there's evil influence, negative influence, the only thing that can help is chanting the holy name. Consciously or unconsciously. Another lesson here with Archamil is that he was uh, saved by the Vishnu Dutas because he was chanting Narayana, four <laughs> syllables of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As it is described, Narayana is extracted from the four Vedas. So these four syllables, Na, Ra, Ya, Na, uh, it's very powerful. It's the most purifying. It's the most purifying of all the purifiers. In general, the holy name, even more powerful than Narayana Nam, is Ram Nam. And even more powerful than Ram Nam is a Krishna Nam. Huh? As described, 1,000 names of Vishnu, Vishnu Sahasra, huh? 
is like three times Ram. And three times Ram chanting is uh, equals one na name chanting of one name of Krishna. So that means if you chant one name of Krishna, you chant three thousand names of Vishnu or Narayana. So, so powerful is the holy name. Even in Namabas, as we all know, there are three stages of chanting Aparada, Aparada, we should avoid. Because if we chant in Aparad, even if we go on with devotional service, become, we will not become purified. We become more and more attached to material sense gratification. Therefore, we wonder. I am so, ma so many years practicing chanting like that. But if we keep Aparada mentality, then we, uh, we will not become purified. So, uh, Namabhas is, uh, has, it has to be attained, that means the free, free of offense, the chanting of free of offenses, uh, and that uh, free of chanting of free of offenses, Archamil achieved success because he had a son named Narayana. That's the good side if one is dharmic, if one is Brahmana, that means he, he is cultivated. He cultivated his uh, life according to instruction of Veda, Shruti. Uh, that means uh, he's in, in he's in Gyan about uh, me meaning of life and ways of life, how to be a human f human being. So he, he has knowledge and he follows his Svadharma, it's also stated here. Uh, Svadharma, Vira Ramaha. So, but he, his uh, um, Svadharma was extinguished because of the bad association of women, of a low class woman. Uh, that's the teaching here. So, although he was uh, very cultured, well behaved, Nicely trained, brahmacharya, truthfulness, steadiness, cleanliness, uh, good sadhana, discipline. Uh, he had all these qualities, mercy, but all this was lost immediately by bad association. He forgot everything, smriti, vibrama, uh, and buddhi, all lost. Uh, but, but because he gave the name Narayana to his son, so in, in, in his old age he chanted Narayana Nam. Uh, and therefore, even when the Yamadutas came, they could not punish him, they could not take his soul and bring him to Yamaraj. Vishnu, Vishnu Dutas came and stopped him. Of course, he didn't attain liberation immediately, although he was liberated, but he got another chance uh, to take up the sadhana of sincere, serious devotional service and chanting in good association for quite some time, and then he attained by Kunta, the spiritual world. Uh, so, uh, Achamil, in the end, he was ultimately fortunate and that was the statement also given by, there was one time a meeting between Brahmanas and they invited Namacharya Silaharidas Thakur. Ah. And the topic was the uh, effect of chanting the holy name. So they had different opinions, like when Brahmanas come together, they all have different opinions. There's not one Brahmana who has the same opinion like another one. So they had different opinions. But they had, they had the good fortune to have Namacharya there. Acharya of the Holy Name, Haridas Thakur. So he was Acharya, the teacher of the Holy Name. So ultimately they consulted opinion or the ultimate Siddhanta of Haridas Thakur, and he said, the holy name is not, the meaning, purpose of chanting holy name is not just to become purified of sin, 
Because if we chant in the, with the mentality to purify our sin, uh, that's a motivation. Uh, it's not motivation, it's not a, a pure, a pure uh, way of chanting. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and the other one is that he, the chanting of Namabhas will give you liberation. Uh, so it removes sin and, and it gives liberation. But this is not the uh, Acharya says, Namacharya says, that's not the mot motive of a pure Vaishnava who chants in Premanam, in Shudanam, because the, the Vaishnava who wants to attain love to Krishna, he, for him liberation or uh, uh, freedom of sinful activities uh, is not a motivation, it's not, it's not a uh, meditation for him. Aridas Thakur points out, this is a byproduct. A devotee doesn't even have to think about destruction of his karma and of um, liber to attain liberation. It's already included in the bhakti process. Uh, so it doesn't have to. Uh, it doesn't have to. Um, aspire for, for in this direction. So, so he pointed out that chanting the holy name purely in, as in love to Krishna, it's the goal of life, not to get rid of sin or to attain liberation. But, but because na, na, liberation and freedom of sin is already attained by Namabhas. But there was one Brahmana, he didn't agree with with the Namacharya and uh, he became very angry, upset and he told him if this is really happened like that or not happen like that, I challenge you. Uh, if it will not happen, then I will cut off your nose. So everyone was upset to hear about that. And later on, this uh, Brahmana, he lost his own nose because of leprosy, because he... Uh, he he uh, performed, <coughs> performed an apparat uh, to a great Vaishnavacharya. So that was, uh, he, he himself, he lost the nose. But Namacharya, he was not, uh, Haridas Thakur, he was not uh, happy about that. He said, oh, now finally this rascal, he got it. No, he actually felt very compassionate. He li left the place and he prayed for the benefit of that soul. Hmm. Because Vaishnava is always uh, merciful. So anyway, there's uh, many lessons here, but the time is always too short. Uh, but I think it's more or less clear. Maybe some, I stop here, maybe some question. That's the same doubt what uh, Maharaj Parikshit had. So you just repeat uh, Maharaj Parikshit's uh, doubt. Uh, he had the same, he, said, he th thought this is useless. What's the use to go to hell and uh, then come up again, become a human being, or sometimes a demigod, again human being, and then the end again you land in hell. Uh, 
Und äh, als Einzler, äh, Shukadev Goswami, he condemned Prayashita und this hellish uh, thing. This, uh, this journey to hell and, and uh, to different uh, species of life. He said, one should stop it. Uh, so the Vaishnava Acharyas like Shukadev Goswami the, and Narad Muni, they are very strong on this point, you know, don't waste your time. Uh, take the lesson, because now you hear the story. For you, for all of us, we should take the lesson. Now we can remember. We have Prabhupada's instruction, we have previous, Vaish previous Acharya's instruction, we have uh, Vaishnava scriptures, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, but we don't read it, we are lazy. Uh, we are lazy, we don't want to uh, uh, absorb ourselves in, in this knowledge. Leela's very nice. Uh, but knowledge of philosophy, no, not so boring. I fall asleep. But Leela can be cheap, you know. Leela, Krishna Leela without Siddhanta, without philosophy, is sentimental. It will not stick in your mind. It will become, you become lusty yourself again. And you will fall down. Therefore, we have to be very careful, you know, that we, we don't jump too deep in the Krishna Leela without also having, without being based on knowledge of Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. And learn these lessons, what the Mahachans and what the Supreme Personality of Godhead are given us, so that we can apply it in our life and that we will not forget it when the test or the allurement is coming. So whatever, because the, the life is like that, we forget everything that happened in, pre, in previous life. Even in this life, you know, we, we don't remember all the sufferings you went through. Because the tendency is that we forget. And especially we forget the previous life. So therefore, this uh, samsara, the going to, uh, through the cycle of samsara, this is described previously, uh, going up and down is useless. It's not an enjoyment for the devotee. At least the devotee has to understand that. There's nothing against sex life, going to prostitutes like that. There's arrangements for that, but not for devotee. Those who want to go back to Krishna, for them they cannot do that. If you don't want to go back to Krishna, if you want to turn around in the samsara chakra, you can do whatever you like. Nobody stops you. But then you have to be ready for the consequences, you know, of punishments and of what. But for a Vaishnava, that's not the way. Uh, the Vaishnava has compassion for the crazy people, Nunam Pramata, Kurute, Vikarma, who engage in mad, you know, in sense gratification, in, in very sinful lives, without knowing the consequences. I feel compassion. Therefore, the Vaishnava goes and preaches these devotee books, going on Harina. Preaching Krishna consciousness as it is, not in disguise. Because it is disguised preaching is not helping. We have to only the straight preaching will help. As Prabhupada did, you know, therefore he had result. Or oh, there's only temporary help. Sooner or later, these people, they maybe become sympathetic to chanting and to Krishna consciousness, but because they have no interest in philosophy, in principles, in sadhana, they give it up sooner or later. Let's see in 10, 20 years. Some other question? I 
Somebody knows? Archamil. What is the meaning of Archamil? The importance. Archamil. Uh, I don't know. Not so much important to know. Like your name, my name, our, our name. We all have different names. Ultimately, the name helps us to remember Krishna. As such, it is important, but other names are not so much important if he doesn't remember your Krishna. Therefore, Archimili was very, very uh, good, you know, because he gave uh, his son uh, a very good name, Narayana Nam, uh, Krishna da Narayana Das, uh, Krishna Das, Ram Das, uh, Shyam Das, it's very good names. Uh, or, or also with Radharani, in, or Gopis in connection, or with Krishna's associates. Because these names are connected with Krishna. And there is so much uh, power in this holy name. Therefore Lord Chaitanya says the name, the name Nam Nam Akari Bahudanicha Sarva Shaktis Tata Yamate Smaranana Kala Etatrichi Tava Kripa Bhagavan Mahapi to Daima Mitisham Yachanu Nanu Raga. There's so much power in the holy name. Therefore, Krishna gave us so many names to chant. But unfortunately, we don't feel any attraction to it. Anu Raga. No Raga. No attraction. That's our our problem. And this is due to, due to aparada, or due to still contemplating sense objects, something temporary, asat, if in your mind maybe, or in your heart, still something is there. Something old maybe, or also something new. Huh. Because we have two karmas, pararapta and aparapta. Huh. Prarabdha is actually by chanting and by practicing devotional service that is finished. Uh, this uh, prarabdha, I mean, uh, uh, aparabdha, that means the subtle. It's like Prabhupada gave the example of the fan. Uh, fan. If the fan, if the fan, if electricity is, fa if you have electricity fa failure, fan is still going on for some time, but in the end, after some time, it will stop. But if you switch on again, or electricity become, come back, or you go in, again in contact with electricity, with Maya, then the fan starts again. Fan starts again. Then again we are in problem, in trouble. Huh? But this subtle, uh, this subtle is actually therefore not a problem. New karma is not a problem. The, uh, prarapta can be still be some hindrance for a devotee. But only a hindrance if you are serious in practice, following instruction of the, of the spiritual master. And therefore our chanting, our serve, seva, everything that we are doing is actually meant to increase our devotion to Guru Maharaj, to the spiritual master. That's all. Because if you have that, if ever we chant, we go into classes or we read Bhagavatam, and we do engaging in various devotional service because of instruction of spiritual master. He gave us instruction. We don't know what is right, what is wrong. And if we follow that, it gives us a remembrance of Guru. Huh? And we get mercy. Huh? And this way we can make advancement. We cannot make advancement by our own effort. Huh? Like Argamuni Prabhu says, therefore he has big Sikha with the hope that Krishna will pull him out from the ocean of burden death. 